Samity Samtastic, back with more Guild Wars 2. Hi! Hey, I'm a little off center because I, I actually was using... There's this cool option that you get here for position, which uh, you don't really see the difference when you're zoomed out because there isn't one. But uh, if you're zoomed in even in the slightest, you can see and when you're zoomed in really close, it makes quite a significant difference. And there have been some reports that having that affects how often the camera glitches out and gets stuck. So you may first notice here that I'm not wearing my plant armor. And I got the entire full set of the second tier. Got the achievement for it, which was under fashion. Oh, uh, yes. I wanted to travel. Under fashion, there's... I probably should have mentioned that before because it doesn't take long to travel. Yes, yes, there we go. B -b -b the daily resets at 5 p.m. server time, and I actually have my clock set to server time, which is nice. Uh, d -d 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 fashion, there we go. Under Silvari Special Armors, I've got 12 of 18, which basically they're at the three tiers. And I don't know if buying, say, the medium and the light with the first tier would affect that. Probably not, but this is... This is, that's, I basically just need the final armor and it's ridiculously expensive and I'm not going to do it right now. So I did, uh, while clearing the last area I was in, I did find this awesome Berserker's Acolyte coat and it just, the, it looks amazing. So I went ahead and utilized some of my nice rare dyes. I used the white and the midnight violet there to really, uh, we could, we could take a look at how other things like that gray give it a silver look. That's kind of cool right there, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah, well that part doesn't matter, but... There we go. Gray and white. Compared to how it is right there. I don't know, I kind of like the purple on it, but... We'll do it. We'll do it. I can always change it back, right? And I am sticking with the headpiece from the, uh, the Silvari armor right there. That looks pretty cool, though. It's a nice looking, nice looking coat, and check out the stats on it. Look at that. Oh, uh, well, if you're not playing, you wouldn't realize that that's like the the tier two armor that I got. The level sixty stuff was like 180 defense, so that's going to be a huge jump. Speaking of huge jumps, I realized that during the last video, I you know I started out with Queensdale. And it would probably make sense for me to actually start in the town, the local region. And so we're going to be doing Divinity's Reach. And uh, we're just going to, since it's a nice round thing, we can do this pretty easily. We're going to go in a clockwise fashion starting at 12. And the first vista that we've got is right over, right over in this bit. Oh, turn, nope, which, um, there we go. Got to head back north. I wasn't paying attention. I actually recognize running up there from doing the personal story during the beta with a human character. And I have at this time made a human character. I made a ranger, which so far is pretty fun and awesome. And I got to try out the fiery dragon sword, and it's pretty fun and awesome too. And so this first vista that we are running into over here takes us into this section. And uh, you saw that person there trying to jump in there like he thought that maybe somehow if you manage to get over onto this roof bit right here that you'll be able to reach the vista over there. And that's simply not the case. He's doing it fast backwards. What you want to do is you want to come over to this section right here, jump on these gravestones to get up on top of these little mausoleums. And there you are. Um... Uh, and if you've got an IMS, this would be the place to use it, but you don't need it. And there we are at that first Vista. I don't know if that would be considered disrespectful to go jumping around on headstones, but there you have it. We're doing it anyway, because completion. Pretty awesome. I, I can't say enough, I can't stress enough how incredibly epic these environments are they're just not they're not repetitive it's pretty amazing stuff 
I truly appreciate it. Next on our list of places to go is this one over here. Um, here's something that's kind of important of note is these all of these points of interest are amongst the ones where you may get really confused saying, I can't figure out how to reach those. It seems to be impossible. And uh, it's actually really simple if you happen to know the trick to it, which is to walk over to this door right here and enter your home district. And then you can easily just walk around to all of those points of interest and attain them all very quickly. And I normally would have mapped over there, I think, to get to this vista, but we're, we're not way off base here. It's going to be this little ring around a bits over here. And there are kind of a couple of ways to get over there. But we're going to start by running up this part right here. I think it simplifies the process. And in order to get over, get on, in order to get on top of this, you can, if you, if you are not careful here, you can easily fall to your death. Oh, there we go. I guess not that easily. I was wondering, I bet, I bet you could make that jump if you use the movement speed increase, but you don't need it anyway, because we're just coming onto this right here. And this takes us directly over to the Vista. And there we are. Pretty nice town. Next up, we creep. Oh, it's actually going to move way along the ways. We've got two in relatively close proximity over here. And this next one here is actually the one that I was thinking I was about to do. Oh, by the way, you can talk to these guys. Malandru guide you. Malandru. They're standing by these statues, and you can say, the, wi the wild? The wild is at my beck and... Oh, I thought it was like, the wind is at my back. The wild is at my back. The wind is at my beck and call... The w God, forget it. We'll do this one. <laughs> okay, so first, first the vista, I'm going the wrong way. We need to actually be on the other side of that little wall right there. You can't get there from here. And you can actually, if you use your IMS, it's possible to jump up on top of that like that and walk your way around over there uh, from here. You can also, the, the way that you're actually supposed to do it is to jump down on this part, but it can be a little bit confusing trying to weave your way through these bits of trees. It's easy to fall down that way. See? You can't see where the hell you're going. But with a little bit of guesstimation and practice or something. I don't know. Just get your increased movement speed and run around the way that I just did. And then you have to jump onto these bits, which can be tricky. I think having swiftness applied makes some of these jumps really difficult because they're basically timed out and, or they're spaced in a way that you can make those jumps a lot of times without having increased speed. And having increased speed means that you're likely to overshoot your jump if you're not really careful. This scene right here actually ended up on a screenshot. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was during the screenshot contest, but it was something that ArenaNet put up on their Facebook page uh, during the beta era, and somebody ended up asking, like, where is that? And that's where this is. This is this fun little garden. Kind of neat. Neat place. And back, we'll just... We'll just skip right back up there because we don't we're already there. We don't need to teleport there. And we'll come down to this side. And this one's a little bit more complicated. You have to you can see right up there, it's the top of that tower. Oof. 
And I think the first time I did this, I ended up falling down like 15 times. And then the last time I did it, I got it on my first try. So we'll see how it goes. On to that right there. And over here. Oh, that guy found the cheap way. You can just walk over there. You don't have to jump around all strange like I just did. And... Uh, uh, that's pretty straightforward. I don't know if they changed this or not. I remembered it being a lot more difficult at the beginning, but maybe it's because, again, I was just acting like an idiot instead of doing it the way that we were supposed to. I think I'm losing frames here because my computer's being stupid. It's like, I gotta think really hard about something. Who knows? I'm stuck at 10 frames per second, which is only like half of what beginning anyway. All right, we've got uh, one more in the outer rings, right by the Osan waypoint, sort of. This one's actually a little bit tricky. You can get the Osan waypoint by jumping to your death down from this vista. You can see the vista is right up on top of that right there, so you can't really get to it from here. You get to it from this uh, this part right over, right over in there, and I think the fastest way. We're going to go to the elevator up right there. Uh, which I got turned around. Alright, that being north, this is going to be... Where we go? No one is crazier than I. And once we've elevated our way up, you can... You have to cut through here. I do believe... Nope, I got turned around again. That's it. That was actually it right out there. Sorry! So this is where the elevator brought us up. And you just need to head around this way. So nothing too crazy about that. And once you come to this bit of roof, you walk out on it. There we are, that's that one in the bag. Speaking of bags, I've actually unlocked two additional bag slots. Right now I only have the four slot bags in them. But uh, they cost 400 gems a piece, which right now equates to slightly more than one gold. And selling all the extra crap that I had saved up now that they've got the trading post functional I um, I was able to make a good chunk of money let's see and I still have a little bit left waiting for me so I still have all of this stuff waiting to be purchased the trading post is actually really cool I might do a video just about that all right so we've got uh, we did one two three what am I doing three four Five, and then the sixth vista is right in here by the palace waypoint. Here we are. I'm actually getting 20 frames right now, which is refreshing and new. Refreshing. Oh, no longer. Okay. Uh, we may as well talk about these points of interest as well. It's actually very, very similar to the home instance point in points of interest. So there's the Queen's Throne Room, which is that one right there. And then over here, there's also uh, this instance, which you'd have to go into the Seraph Headquarters. However, this one over on the left, you don't need to go into anywhere. You can just walk in there and grab it because it's an open, an open room. Well, let's head on over to Yon Vista. There it is, right up here. And this this reminds me, it's like a throwback to Guild Wars factions when you go to become Wei no Su or closer to the stars. I think it's Z, the Jing, Jingku Corridor or something like that is the mission where you become closer to the stars and there's a collection of these little planetary metal things spinning around making a distinctive noise. 
And I think a lot of the sounds that they use for stuff like that, that really big sort of echoey sound, they went to a nuclear power plant that was being built and, uh, and went down in some tunnels between cooling towers and did some recordings in there. And it was apparently pretty awesome. And that's how to get to this vista. So be careful. Okay. When, when trying to get these, make sure you go... It's in this first section right here. You go to double tap to evade and turn that off. Because as you're like, trying to inch forward, double tapping is really easy. And that can cause you to just roll off of an edge and, uh, and crash and burn. Pretty place. Pretty awesome. So as uh, as promised next after this is going to be Kessex Hills, we'll move on in that direction and get that taken care of. But this has been the Divinity's Reach exploration. And on oh oh actually one more one more bit of important info is from this waypoint over here you may have spotted you may have spotted what I'm about to be talking about but uh, if you didn't if you didn't see oh I for whatever reason can't I lose my bearings every single time because I have I don't have the map orientation fixed but you can just jump down here. It's no big deal. You'll heal up. And uh, and then wander on over to this gate. And this is the gate to Evanhawk, if you're wondering how to get there. it's This is our gate right off in this direction. It takes you straight to Evanhawk. And Evanhawk, if you're low level, don't really go exploring there. Because you can actually come across uh, level... I think they're level... What level are they? Four, like 30? Yeah, there's you encounter some level thirty enemies even inside Evanhawk. Some some. Uh, they're talking about it right there. That's kind of neat. They they uh, have contextual conversations. Evanhawk does have its own problems, so that'll take you there. And Severatists. That was what I was trying to think of. And there we go. A message from Steam. It's time to draw this to a close. So thanks, th thanks, thanks for watching. And go ahead and click like and subscribe if you liked it and you want to subscribe. And uh, and you will see me later. That's I just did dance. I meant to do wave. Having Steam messages being spammed at me like that is distracting. Anyway, I'll see you later. We'll do that again once more. Bye.